Howdy y'all. Welcome back to Lil Bits. Today I want to talk a little bit about gaming on the Z80. Gaming has been a part of computer history for just about as long as there have been computers. Some of the earliest games were text adventures, what is today called interactive fiction. Not only are we able to play older titles on our small computer central computers, we can play brand new titles created to this day. In fact, we can develop our own games using modern inform libraries, a coding language made for generating Z machine games. What is Z machine? Many text adventures were written by Inficom, and at one point, the Z machine interpreter was developed. This virtual machine interpreter allowed coders to focus on writing story and gameplay while maximizing compatibility. This works not dissimilarly from Java Virtual Machine in concept. There are many implementations of Z Machine Interpreter on many different platforms, all allowing us to play a wide collection of Z code or Z Machine games, the same exact binary games. Today we are going to look at an implementation of Z Machine Interpreter that runs on our own Zilog 80 computers from Small Computer Central. This here is Veza. Veza is a build of Z Machine that will interpret code for us on our Z80s. We don't need to play on a modern computer. This is developed by a gentleman named Sinstra. I hope I'm getting his name right. It is S-I-J-N-S-T-R-A. I've always pronounced it Sinstra in my mind. Uh, so <laughs> hope I got your name right, brother. Now. I highly suggest if you like this video and if you like the Z Machine Interpreter we're going to download today that you consider donating to Sinstra's development work. It keeps him up and running and it keeps him pumping out new additions. Next, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to download and install onto the system the Veza Z Machine Interpreter as well as how to find games for it where to buy games for it if you want new games and how to package up games for download.com the download.com utility all right let's get started all right so now there are actually multiple builds of veza if we look for veza on itch.io what we'll see is that there are two versions there's one for the agon light which will work on the Aegon Light Origins, the original Aegon Light, and the Aegon Light 2 by Olamex. And we have VEZA. Now we want to work with VEZA today. VEZA targets the CPM operating system. And the CPM operating system is what we're running on our small computer central computers. Now we have a couple of versions of it. We have something called ROM WBW, which uses an underlying BDOS system. Now I don't fully understand it. I believe BDOS is a part of all CPM operating systems, but their BDOS seems to be kind of specific to ROM WBW and it has some specific features, which means that sometimes software is not easily portable between ROM WBW CPM revisions and other CPM revisions. Although sometimes it is. That's important because we need to know which build we're going to use. Now if we want to download this, we can download it now we can pay fifteen dollars and I really really recommend you do this um, I'm not gonna do it right now but I've done it for the Aegon Light version and I'm going to do it for this version I'm just not gonna do it on camera for you so one thing we can do is go to the GitLab where Sinstra actually hosts these builds yes that's right you can get them for free Sinstra says that donations are appreciated but not required, so I am allowed to show you this as far as I understand. And here what we see is actually a lot of different builds of VEZA for different operating environments. You can see that there's actually another revision, a completely different interpreter for that he keeps maintained for uh, called M1ZVM and M3ZVM. So so you can see VEZA is just one of several of the Z machine interpreters that this gentleman has written for us and given to the community. Uh, it's, really worth, it's really worth paying for. I, I really think that's the case. Now, one thing that we need to do is find the correct build for the systems we're targeting. Now, we're targeting 
small computer central computers, which are typically compatible with RC 2014. Now, one thing I did when I first found this repository was I just did a control F and type RC 2014. And at the time I did find something, today I'm not, but I did find that VESA RW is tested on RC 2014. It should say it somewhere down here. We're looking for VESA RW. Here we go. Yeah, tested on RC 2014 and SC 126 using TerraTerm. We want specifically a VT100 because our terminal emulators over here are emulating a VT100, or at least that's one of the emulators they're compatible with, or one of the terminals they're compatible with. So we're gonna go ahead and download us a copy of VESA RW. Now these little extensions are just to denote what the build is. And this is not a code base with the software source code in it. This is a code base that contains binary builds of the project. So we can download it. You can see I actually already have a copy of it downloaded here. So I can you know, overwrite it if I want and I'm saving it without that extension because when you're running it, you don't really want that extension there unless you're trying to keep multiple copies installed for testing multiple different builds, which it, that's beyond the scope of this particular video. So once we have it, which I've, I've downloaded a copy uh, in multiple places, once we have it, we can install it. So in order to do that, we wanna fire up one of our small computers uh, today I'm running a Z180 based computer, the RC700 series, and I'm going to connect to it with Minicom. I'm going to turn it on. Boop, 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 boop. And here we are in ROM WBW. Now ROM WBW is going to let us do some pretty cool things, particularly it has X modem on it, which lets us arbitrarily transfer files without having to pre-package them. A little later in the video, I'll show you how to package them for the download.com utility, which needs special package format in order to actually transfer files onto it. And you can also arbitrarily transfer files as long as you go and package them up ahead of time. Now, we wanna boot into Z, Z system. Z system is a CPM system. Let's look at the help real quick. You can see that this is, the first stage is this is the bootloader for ROM WBW and it's actually capable of booting several different ROMs and we can look at the ROMs we have. We have various fourth basic kind of directly boot into a programming language type of languages. We have a little game, it's 2048, I think I've showed that off before. Uh, the X modem flash updater, that'll let you update the flash without having to remove it from the system and it uses X modem to do it but uh, we have both Z system and CPM 2.2. Now on Z180, I pretty much exclusively use Z system. So I'm gonna boot into Z system and you can see that we actually have uh, quite a few drives here. We have our eight drives that live on an SD card that is attached to this system. The system knows how to handle SD cards natively. You don't really have to think about it. You just plug it in. And we also have a RAM disk and a ROM disk. Now the ROM disk is the boot ROM. It's a read-only file system, though it is on a writable EE prom, and it contains all the operating system and all, all the various binary code that we can run here. The RAM disk is a disk that we can put code to and run code from that will clear itself out between reboots. And then all the rest of these are slices, what we call slices of uh, the SD card drive that we have plugged in. And I believe each of these slices is as big as 16 megabytes, but I could be wrong. It may be eight. Um, I haven't figured out how to confirm that. Uh, it, supposedly, it supports a 128 uh, megabyte CF card at maximum, which uh, I think would give us enough space to have 16 megabytes for each of eight. But my math may be bad there. I have calculators all over this room and I decided to do math in my head. That's insanity. 128 divided by 16 is exactly eight. That's what I thought. 
Okay. Well, I should have trusted the math I did in my head because it was correct. <laughs> now, that part might not stay in the video. Now, let's go ahead and see how we're going to copy this over. Now, we can't write directly to the B drive. So we've changed to the C directory where we don't have anything. And in fact, the C directory needs to be initialized. So in order to do that, we need to use clear dir, b clear dir c. Yes, we want to clear the directory. It has to be a capital Y. Uh, it's weird because this is so not a case sensitive system in most cases, but then all of a sudden it becomes case sensitive for clear dir. Uh, but that is a new tool, I believe, for, uh, I mean, look, version April 2020. So it's using newer conventions. So it's got some case sensitivity. Now we can check it and it should just tell us no file. There we go. No file. It's not giving us weird junk output anymore. It's, it's telling us, okay, there's a file system here, but there's nothing in it. All right. So now what we want to do is we want to receive a file. Let's take a look at the XM help output. You can see that we can use. Now it's called XM, but it shows X modem. We could have named it X modem if we wanted to, but that's not what it's called by default. If we want to receive a file, we have to call X modem, tell it R to receive a file, and then the file name that we want to receive as. Now it doesn't matter what the file is called on the, on the big computer. As long as the small computer is told a file name, it will name it that file name. So in order to do that, we want to call XM. R, and then we can call Vezza.com. We're not calling Vezza, we're calling the file name Vezza.com. Okay, so now we're attempting to receive, now we have to send the file. If I send the file using X modem, make sure you're using X modem. Now I have a prepared copy here in my games directory for Z machine. Vezza.com, sending it. It takes a moment, there has to be an acknowledge. It's not that big a file. Now it's here and we can run it and we'll get a help output if we run it without any flags. See, it tells us we need a game. So we're ready to game, we just need to install some games. So one way we can do that, of course, is to just use X modem again. So let's say we want to install uh, Zork. We're going to receive Zork1.com. Oh, dot Z, Z3 probably is what we have. Uh, you want to make sure you know your file names. Uh, Z3, Z5, the only difference between them is that Z5 supports an undo command. Now these are text adventure games. If you're familiar with Zork, all of these are going to be text adventure games that we're loading up today. Um, so they all play the same way. They, you know, there's some that are old, like Zork One is one of the first uh, that's well known today. And some of them are brand new. Some of them are being written as we speak. So there is a long, rich tradition of writing Z Machine games. And there are a lot of good games out there, a lot of really good games, a lot of which are more forgiving than the original text adventures, which can be very obtuse, uh, very adventure gamey, in that you, you kind of have to guess which objects do I rub on which other objects to breed progress. So uh, we're going to go ahead and receive this file. No file. So now that's because I did not refer to XM by its absolute path. Now Z system is pretty cool in that if you have uh, commands in your A drive, you don't need to use an absolute path to refer to them. Right now we only have commands in our B drive. So we are we do need to use these absolute paths to refer to them. So instead, I can do the absolute path, Zork 1 Z3, and then I can send a file. Now I'll show you where I'm getting these games from and how to find them a little later in the video. But for now I have a mostly prepared uh, directory full of games that I want, like um, there's still more to add. There's some that I've prepackaged for the other system, which I will show you how to do. And there are some that are paid for that uh, oh look it's a z5 file so we actually don't want to send that file instead we're going to do control x and control x now that canceled it and it deleted the blank file that it was creating instead of doing z3 we want to do 
put the xmr zork one dot z5. Now we can send it with x modem. And the reason this zork one is a z5 is because it's actually a version that was released later that has um, it has Invisiclues in it, which I'm hoping will help me beat the game without needing a walkthrough because I looked at a walkthrough a little bit and the, I don't know how you're supposed to figure out some of the stuff you're supposed to do in Zork 1. I even have a map. I have the official formal map that came with the game originally. And with that map, I'm like, how, do you, how are you supposed to figure out that you need to put the painting in the trophy case? That doesn't make any sense. So we're just waiting for it to finish uploading. Now the games are pretty big and you do need external storage. You can see that was 102K. That's already more memory than we have on the system. The system can only address 64K total. So that's not entirely true. One, the Z180 can actually address up to one megabyte, but this is not configured to allow it to do that. The CPM and ROM WBW, you can do paging with software, but uh, I don't know how to do all that stuff uh, from within ROM WBW without rebuilding it. And I don't know how to rebuild it to do that stuff either. But we will learn that stuff down the line. So later on, we will be accessing our full one megabyte of memory sometime in the future. So you look forward to that. Now, let's take a look at what we have. We have Veza and Zork 1.z5. If we want to run that game, we should use the command that Veza showed us to use and refer to the file directly. Story is loading. Boom! Zork1, you are standing in front of a house. Open mailbox. Read leaflet. Zork is a game of adventure, danger, and low cunning, and also unintuitive puzzles. So, welcome to it. Now, Again, a lot of the newer games that people are writing and releasing are, a lot of them are free, some of them are pay. I have some pay ones myself. I'll show you where to find those. But a lot of them are way more forgiving than Zork. I know I'm talking smack about Zork right now. It's one of the first games out there. So they kind of expected you to have a lot of time to tinker with it. But you know, today it's it doesn't hold up particularly well in terms of respecting your time specifically. So yeah, now we have, we have the ability to game and we can upload as many games as we want. And of course on this system, we have the option and of course we can save file name zork1.sev .sev and then we can quit. Yes, you can see our save file right there. And we can restore that anytime we want. And we can save over it if we want. The Aegon Lite version has a, a bug where you can only save to the file one time so you'll be making a new save file every time but that's not the case on these cpm builds they you can save directly over an existing save file just fine all right so one way that we can do this on this system is through sneaker net we can use a fat file system now i want to grab the tool that i need to do that with if i go to ROM WBW fat.com boom it should take me straight to this this is the fat.com utility written for ROM WBW to work with fat file systems I have demonstrated this in a previous video I'll link that in the comments we want to go to releases and grab a copy of the latest build it's just this fat.com file that's all you need now I have a file here, but I believe this is a new release since then. So I'm going to go ahead and replace it. And then we can send that. Now we need to use X modem again, B X M receive fat.com. And then we want to send it with X modem. Now that's in my downloads directory. There it is. Sent it, sending it. Now, 
Now I'm going to reboot here to show you something so that you can see how I am identifying the drives. So let's reboot. There we go. Do you see this here? This is our device inventory. You see disk zero, character one, character, that's our serial outputs, our serial inputs. We have four disks total, five disks total. One is the RAM disk, that's how I know that was a RAM disk. The other is the ROM disk, that's a read-only memory. We don't have IDE1 or IDE2, so we don't have disk two or disk three. And we, or IDE0, IDE1 rather. But we do have SD0, which is disk four, and it just always maps to disk four. So when I do fat file system stuff, I know that I'm gonna be working with the SD card, so I want to refer to disk four. It doesn't have a letter, it has a number. So if I change it to C directory, dir, I have my fat.com there, I can use fat. And now that, now that I'm in the same directory as this tool, I don't need to use the complete path, but using the complete path will still work. The absolute path, rather. So if I say fat help, or if I just type fat without anything, it should give me a help output. There's my help output. Those are the commands I can run. So one thing I need to do is set up a partition. On B, we have a command called fdisk80 and it's exactly what it sounds like now you see it's asking me for a disk I know that I need disk 4 and you can see this is an empty table in fact I can reinitialize it it's even emptier now one thing I want to do here is checking help you can see one of the commands I can do is reserve area for CPM slices and I definitely want to do that I don't want to overwrite the CPM slices that I just started adding data to. So we want to reserve eight slices because that's the typical amount that we will need. So if I type R, you can see it's defaults to eight, so I'll just hit enter. Eight CPM slices have been reserved. Now that means that the first certain amount of space on my drive contains CPM slices. I'm not gonna overwrite them when I start writing FAT file system to this disk. So now I can create a new FAT file system. Let's take a look, it's still empty. So we'll need a new file system. We're gonna name it partition one. You see how the starting cylinder is not zero? That's because we reserved those, those slices. So we're gonna start at the default and then we're gonna make it, uh, let's say 64 megabytes. Now let's make 128 megabytes. I don't think CPM can address more than that on the on the SD card, but if it can, it doesn't matter because we're not gonna use that much space. So, and I may want to add other file systems to this SD card for other reasons. So, that being said, we can print what we have. There's our FAT16 file system. We can write what we have, yes. And now we can format that file system using FAT format four. Yes, we do want to format it. Now we have a FAT file system that we can use with our main computer. Now I'm gonna turn this system off. It's off even though it's still blinking. There it goes, it's giving me some garbage output. That line tends to float when uh, We're gonna exit, leave Minicom. That line tends to float when it, when it gets shut off on these Z180 systems just for a little bit. All right, now I'm gonna remove my SD card and I'm gonna plug it into an SD card adapter on my host system here. And then I'm gonna mount it. Looks like I'm, I got SDG1 this time around. You can see it's empty. Now it is a FAT file system and it's rooted as root root, or it's mounted as root root. And I'm not gonna change that or attempt to change that. So I'm just gonna use sudo to copy stuff over. Now again, I have a prepared file or a prepared directory full of games. Z machine. 
These games are packaged for the download.com utility. These games are not. Some of these games are for pay. I won't be able to distribute those and I won't really show them. Some of them are, most of them are free. You can find them on the Interactive Fiction Archive. IF Archive Z Code. Here you go, the Interactive Fiction Archive Z Code. I pulled the vast majority of these games from here. You can see a lot of them are just straight up the Z3, Z5, Z6 files. Um, there are other file formats, something called ZBlorp. I don't know if that works with Vez. I haven't tested it. I don't, I don't, I suspect it doesn't. Um, but I don't know for sure. Now, the, these games are built with a tool called Inform. Inform compiles these games into Z machine code based on a custom Inform language. And a lot of these games are written with something called, not a lot of them, some of them are written with something called Puniform, which is a library for writing Inform games, which the Inform compiler can then turn into code, into machine code that is interpreted by the VESA machine interpreter. VESA being a Z machine interpreter. It's again, it's very much like a, a virtual machine that runs a uh, common machine code that is the Z code language. Now, if we want to transfer these files, it's very easy. We can say, okay, well, we want Zork 2 and Zork 3. So we want to sudo because I'm, or sudo, it's both pronunciations are correct. Sudo is more correct, but uh, both pronunciations are correct. We want to sudo copy Zork2, Zork3. What else? Let's grab anything else that we might want. You know, Rogue doesn't work on this system. It's just, it uses too much memory for this particular build of small computer, but uh, it does have pseudo graphics. It has ASCII graphics, so that's a cool one. And it does work on the Aegon Lite build of Vesa. So if you have an Aegon Light and you're using Vesa Aegon, you can play Rogue. It's pretty cool. Uh, Moon Mist, maybe. Um, Enchanter is a fun one. I haven't gotten very far in it, but I'm really enjoying Enchanter a lot. Uh, Tristam is a paid one. Hibernate is a paid one. I'll show you those pages later. Uh, Vampire, The Masquerade. No, I'm kidding. Uh, Carpathian Vampire. <laughs> this is not a paid one, but it, it's it's a new one. It's a pretty brand new game compared to a lot of these. Um, and that, that's a good selection. We're not going to do them all. And we're going to copy all those to mount. And you see, I mean, they're very small files compared to the host systems uh, storage. So it's pretty fast. But of course, they're big files for our small computers. So um, it takes a long time to transfer them over the serial communication line using X modem. So this is actually a lot faster. All right, now we can sudo u mount mount. And then we want to remove the SD card. We want to plug it back into our small computer from our big computer. And then we can go back into Minicom. We can turn the system on. Go to Z machine, or Z system rather. Haha, <laughs> interesting. Now we want to go to C. There's our fat command. Now we can look at what we have in the fat file system. So if we do fat dir for there are all our files that we just transferred over. Now you'll see it truncated the file names because CPM is only capable of handling eight character file names plus three character extensions. So, you know, that's that's normal. Don't worry about that. It can break things, but not with this, not here. It's not gonna break things here. Now, um, because we're gonna refer to these file names directly. Now, if we wanna actually use these things, we have to move them over to a CPM directory. We can't run them directly from this directory. So we wanna use fat copy for 
all, we want to copy all dot all over to C. And we are copying. And you can see the copy is much slower. The big computer had them all done before we even blinked. So you can imagine how slow this would be over the baud connection, which I'm, I'm connected at 115,200 baud, but I believe that the actual file transfer takes place at 9600 baud, which is particularly slow. We're done copying, which is faster than it would have taken to get each of these games over. We didn't have to type every single XM command for each single game. So this is a very convenient way to do this. We can see our games here, and we can run our games. File not found. I typed that wrong. Oh, I plus. I typed plus. Yeah. Story is loading. There we go. A science fiction story by Stefan Volk. You wake up, a feeling of nausea grips you as you slowly regain your con as you slowly regain consciousness. I believe this is cut off. This is cut off. There we go. All right, so my, my um, terminal was cut off a little bit there because I'm zoomed in for the video, but normally you'll see all the text like this. All right, quit, yes. And you'll see that all these games work. Now the terminal looks a little funky because I just full screened and unfull screened and Minicom doesn't always handle that well, but everything's working fine. Zork3.z3. See, there's Zork3, looks fine. Save. Everything saves, restore. Restores just fine. So you can play games on these systems. Uh, next up, I will show you how to actually package these games up for the standard Z80 CPM.2. For the standard Z80 CPM 2.2 and the download.com utility, which initiates downloads from the small computer side and needs a specific package format in order to do that. All right, coming up next. All right. And we are on my Windows virtual machine today. Now, I have this all prepared, but I want to show you how you need to do it. The application we're looking for is Grant Searle's File Packager. Now, one thing we're going to see is this article. This article is actually pretty important. It teaches us how to use this file packager. It also gives us code that we can run on Linux to replace the file packager, but this has not proven a reliable way to package files for me. It's worked once or twice, but I've had some problems. I've seen some errors and I don't trust it to replace the official tool. Um, but what we want is this package. We're looking for this particular package from Grant Searle. And this will take us to his project and this will take us to his page. Now, ooh, I'm looking for the downloads, ROM files and CPM. Okay, and then we download files here. Now this is the file we have, you see, save as. I already have a copy and I already have a copy extracted. So I'm not gonna save this copy, but this is where you need to go to get it. And I'll put this link in the video description, okay. Now, this file contains some code it, and it contains an application that we need. 
the application we need lives inside of Windows app. Now there's two files we need. We need this one and we need the file packager. The file packager is the application itself. I'm not sure what this is, uh, but uh, we, I know we need to register it. And if we go back to our article here, it tells us how to do that. We need to take a copy of that file and if we're using Windows 64-bit, we need to place it in this directory. And if we're using Windows 32-bit, we need to use System32 instead. And on both systems, we need to open a terminal as an administrator and then run this command before the file application loader will work. Now I've done that. Uh, once you do all that, then you can go ahead and run this package application. I'm gonna delete the existing package it's asking about because I've been packaging stuff with it. Now this thing is a little weird in how it works, but it makes sense and it was written by a very low level coder, so it, it makes sense, but it, it takes some getting used to. When we want to package a file, what we wanna do is import that file. So we're, you can see I've been packaging stuff. Over here, it's gonna default to com. If you're trying to package something that's not a .com file, change it to all files. You can see I have plenty of stuff here. Um, these are games I've been packaging and I will actually host all of them that are not, you know, that I'm allowed to host that are not proprietary or otherwise owned by somebody else's copyright. Um, I will host them on my blog site as well. I'll have a link to that in the description as well. But say we want to package up Starcross, which is an original Infocom game. Well, you import it, the import is complete. File added to package file. Now one thing you can look at is, okay, well what's this temp file? Well, it says it saves it here in this file called package files. Okay, so that's, that's where it lives. It lives in a temp directory called package files. Well, now I can do two things. I can delete that package file or I can open it. If I open it, it'll open it in notepad. This is the file. What's gonna happen is we're gonna send this file as a text file. And when it does that, the interpreter on CPM side is going to interpret this line. It's going to say run a download with this file name and then it's going to give it this little acknowledge bit by whatever this is and then the rest of this is the actual application. This is the code. This is the this is starcross.z3 in a hexadecimal format of some kind. I don't understand this format but I plan to uh, because I would like to replace this tool with something a little better maybe fix that uh, C program in the article about fixing it uh, and be able to do this on Linux more conveniently. Now, the thing about this is you can save it at this point. You save it as something that you want to name it. So I, I would call this, for example, package Starcross. And it looks like I haven't actually made this one yet, so it's a good thing I used it as an example. And it's gonna automatically, because it's Windows, it's gonna automatically put the .txt file extension on it, and then I save it. Now it's saved. Now I can close this out, I can delete the package file, say yes, and I can import another. And now, one thing you can do is you can package multiple things. So if I wanted to package Degeneracy, which is a game, and then I could import another file, and I could package Veza right alongside it, right? And then I can open that and you'll see here after the end of the first file it will just do another one of these commands and then it feeds it another file. Now I have had this not be reliable all the time so I try to package one at a time which is tedious um, I have packaged the archive utility and one thing you can do is you can archive multiple games ahead of time, package that archive, send it to the system, and then unarchive it. Now I've had trouble with that when I have a very large archive, but it seems to work fine for kind of more reasonably sized archives. Um, it's probably a file system space issue on the small computer side. Now I, again, have a lot of these prepared. I've been passing them back and forth between my virtual machine and my host machine and I'm gonna go ahead and show you what I have already. So, 
I'm going to turn, I've got a, I've switched to a different computer now. I'm on a regular Z80, not a Z180, and we're running CPM 2.2. This particular build of CPM does not have an X modem on it. Instead, we have download.com. You can also see we have unarc. I, I use, I packaged that up and sent it to the system with download.com. So, uh, say we wanted to install a bunch of games in the J directory. Oh, I don't have a J directory. Say we wanted to install a bunch of games in the ACP. Let's go with the D directory. Dir. There's no files in the D directory right now, but we want files there and we want to download them. We don't have the same sneaker net option that we did with our ROM WBW. The only really thing we can do to get these onto the system is to utilize download.com and this package format that I just demonstrated. So this time when we send a file, we don't send it as Z modem, we send it as ASCII text, which will cause the command line interpreter to read it as though it's hand typed text, which is why it starts with that A colon download.com command in the text file. So I have a bunch of prepared games as I showed in my Z machine games directory. We're going to look for any of them that say package in front of it. So if I wanted to install package blorp, for example, oh, I can only select one. So you hit space to select and then you hit enter. I hit space twice. It tried to select two files, but you can only select one. So you can see it actually called it called download.com with this file name and then download.com initiates this download. This is the output of the download.com utility. All right, it's done. Sure. Now, one thing that we don't have is VESA. So if we want to do that, see no VESA, we need to do the same exact thing. Now, again, I, I've prepackaged it. It's the same exact way as I did with the .z5 files, except it's a .com file. So if I want to send it, actually, let's make sure we're, we've got a clear terminal here. Because sometimes you can end up with invisible special characters if you're typing randomly like I am. And uh, we want to make sure we're sending to a clean terminal or you might get errors. We need package or package Veza .txt. There it is. Now this is an experimental build I was testing for the creator, um, but this is the build that we're going to be using. So if we use now we're in the A directory, so we can just call Veza directly. But if we were in the D directory we would need to call VEZA explicitly using the absolute path. VEZA. And you can see we get our help output. We have our blorp.z5, VEZA, blorp.z5. Oh, see, I tried to do it as though we were in the A directory, but I need to use the absolute path, blorp. And the file is loaded. Actually, let's try that again. Quit. Yes, I want to quit. Let's demonstrate it. Veza blorp.z5. Let's demonstrate it correctly. You worked hard and invested heavily in getting your brewery commercially viable. Underwater brewing has turned out to be a great gimmick for sales. Underwater brewing. Yeah, so this is an underwater brewery that you have to maintain the operations of. And it's a pretty fun game. And it's also by Sinstra. It is very awesome. And I really appreciate everything he's done. I've learned a lot. And I called it Puniform earlier, but the library is actually called Puny Inform. And uh, We'll demonstrate that in another video. I wanted to make this video specifically so that people can get excited about buying these systems, 
building these systems, using these systems, and eventually developing for these systems. So we will definitely cover Puny Inform and how to use Puny Inform to write games because we need more game developers for these systems. That's really going to help us proliferate the continuing growth of 8-bit across the educational user space. Um, so that's about it for today, actually. Uh, we've covered a lot. We've covered how to both install, package, and also to play games. Um, so uh, I guess I'll let y'all go. Uh, this went a little quicker than I thought because it was tremendously fun. And I hope y'all have great times playing these classic games, both new and old. Thank you so much for listening. Peace. And here are the stars of today's show. This is a computer I call Red. And this is a computer I call Hubert. They are my two small computers. Actually, I have more than just two, but they're the two that were in the show today. Say bye, y'all. Bye, y'all.